What's poppin' y'all? According to many people, Yachty went on a full-blown crash-out mission just about a week ago that lasted a couple of days. He aired everything out the first day, but it started to become a recurring explanation, right? People got to get into and give more details to the audience about what happened. So let's first start this off with the main players. There's Lil Yachty, there's Caribou, who is an artist that was signed and managed by Lil Yachty's new collective, Concrete, that he started a couple of years ago. This is, I wouldn't say it's similar, but it's a similar idea to what he initially tried to do with the sailing team when he first got on around 2015. And then the third player in this, the third main player is Mitch, who Yachty says is his closest friend or one of his closest friend, best friend that's been with him since 2015. And they host a podcast together, a safe space that's at Yachty's house. Yachty's just chilling, laying down on his bed. The other guy's at this like comfy seat next to them. And the podcast is sponsored by Happy Dead. And I think it's released through the podcast network that Nelk owns. So these are the three people. Keep in mind that Caribou had just left less than a month ago. She had left the concrete group and this spurred a lot of different conversations as to why. So we're going to put out, we're going to show exactly what Caribou had put out and then what Yachty had put out because this all ties in together. I don't want to say this. I'm going to say this shit one time, right? We uh, have split ways with care as far as this concrete. I have nothing to say, nothing bad to say, nothing negative to say about Kara. I wish her the best in her career. Yeah, um, that's that. You know, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I don't have anything anything really bad to say or anything good to say. We just split, you know. And um, I wish the best for Kara in her career. This was confirmation from Yachty that she left the group. A lot of rumors started circulating once people saw that she wasn't performing at the shows that Concrete were booked at, and she had unfollowed a ton of people that were in the group. So Yachty puts this out. I made a video about this. You could check it out. I'll probably have it on screen somewhere in the top right. And she, or I said, that she will either have a lot more to say in the future or Yachty will have a lot more. I lean more towards Yachty in the initial video that I put out, which should probably give you some insight or some foreshadowing as to where I'll lean in this video. But I thought that Yachty did as much as he could and he didn't want this to happen. Anyway, continuing, there became more fanfare around Lil Yachty when he unfollowed Drake. So he briefly unfollowed Drake. I don't know how people get the notifications on these things, but someone posted it. Uh, one of Aubrey, the Aubrey's attorney is the account name. And he posted, well, and then you could see that Yachty didn't follow Drake anymore. The rumors around this were involving the SOD song or Super Soak. So they had sampled, Yachty and Drake had sampled Mr. Hotspot's song. So he had a song out. I don't remember the song title. The song was Goodness Gracious. So he had the song Goodness Gracious from a couple of years back. They sampled the song and then it was leaked through Kai Sinat. So Yachty had sent it to Kai Sinat. Drake didn't know that this was going to be leaked. Apparently, this was an authentic leak. We didn't know that. I initially thought that Drake had slid it to Kai Sinat to see what the streets, quote unquote, in terms of the internet, the fans were thinking about it. That ended up not being the case. So I ate that. I wouldn't call it an L, but yeah, I got that one wrong. Not even wrong. I made the incorrect guess. Regardless, Yachty had sent it to Kai Sinat. We come to find out through academics who asked Yachty that Yachty, this song was for his project or his tape, something involving Yachty. It was Yachty's song, which felt kind of weird because it was one of those songs where Drake just dominated the track and not that Yachty sucked on the track, although I don't believe that. Yachty adds much to the track. I think the song is better off without Yachty. That specific song, it's just a Drake type record. Regardless, Yachty starts getting some hate when he went on a podcast with, I don't know if it was the Nelk, Bo no, it wasn't the Nelk Boys. It was the Flagrant Podcast. And they say, how come that song didn't come out? Yachty explains to them, hey, we just couldn't get the sample cleared. And they're saying, oh, like, what's going on? Why couldn't you get the sample cleared? He explains that they couldn't get the sample cleared because Mr. Hotspot is super religious or something like that and didn't want to clear, or he just didn't want to clear the sample. And then Yachty said, yeah, it's not even an artist whom we regularly have issues with clearances. We know how that goes. He said, it's not even an artist, it's an influencer. And then 
everyone decided to take this, not even out of context, but to misinterpret it and make it seem like Yachty was down this guy and saying, oh, he's just an influencer. He should be clearing the sample for us, which is not the case. It's I think that's just a severe overreach from fans that wanted to grasp at something. Like, I'll play you guys the clip right now and you guys let me know. What do you mean? Like in this situation, like you couldn't get the sample clear. Yeah, but this wasn't an artist. This was an Instagram social media influencer. And they wouldn't clear a sample? Yeah, he went down like a Christian path. Wow. Oh, that's... Oh, okay, I respect that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But then aren't there certain artists that they're so big where it's like, hey, you pay me and I also want points on this song. So now it's like he can't... That artist can't get the points on the song yeah, because... Yeah, but I mean, but it's still the song is... If it's a good song, it's like you get to perform it, you get to... Uh, that's you the, you're making the money on the road. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you share how much money was offered to the, the Instagram influencer that turned it down? I, he just dubbed it. I mean, he, we didn't, I didn't think we got into money. He was like, no. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. It, 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 everyone was like, are you serious? As you can see, he didn't even say that the guy was... He said the situation was crazy. The interviewer is the one that said, oh, why wouldn't he do that? He said, oh, he went down a Christian path. He said, we didn't even get into the conversation about money. And he said, no. So Mr. Hotspot follows up and says, oh, he's down to do it, but he would like for it to be a more clean song, clean version. We end up getting a new version and a new announcement that this song would be released without Yachty. And around the same time, Yachty unfollows Drake, which is where we get that screenshot that was put out by Aubrey's attorney or one of Drake's fans. So that got people thinking, okay, is there static between Yachty and Drake? Yachty has been very, very close to Drake. He's been instrumental in Drake's career. He gave Drake the Jumbotron uh, pop-in song word for word. Damn near bar for bar. It was a Yachty song already. He gave it to him. He's assisted a lot in Drake's career style, choice of nail pain, I'm guessing, and her loss, amongst other things that we potentially don't even know about. So Yachty here, I think the frustration is building. He refollows Drake soon after, so we don't know if this was an accidental thing or whatever the case may be. Regardless, the frustration towards fans misinterpreting things is mounting on Yachty. These are just like a couple of, it's a snowball, snowball effect. So now Yachty's not on that song. It got released on 100 gigs, a new pack, three pack. I don't believe it's on streaming services yet. The interesting part about that is nothing's really changed on the song other than the fact that Yachty's no longer on it. It's not a clean version of the song. And the previous three tracks from 100 gigs were released. So I'm guessing they're trying to get it released. It would look very, very odd for Mr. Hotspot for him to clear the song now after he said no. And the initial time, he really didn't even want to entertain it, which is like claps and hats off to that guy. Respect anybody standing so firmly on their beliefs. So that's the saga with that song. Then comes the podcast incident. So Yachty has a podcast, A Safe Space with Mitch, his very close friend, and then they have this rapper Key Glock. We never knew who Mitch was, majority of us, before this podcast. Personally, I didn't even know the details of Yachty's relationship with Mitch until this specific podcast episode because I just don't watch their podcast. So during this podcast, they start to get into this conversation about people doing crimes. People doing crimes, things that will lead them into prison or potentially getting killed and wanting to live the rapper lifestyle but not having access to it not having the talent i don't really know key glock also talks about he was robbing when he was 18 years old and then mitch is trying to be reasonable and just say somewhat of a platitude but just say yeah you know there's other options this and that and then this frustrates yachty now i don't know if this was built up from the tension that yachty's been experiencing on social media from fans before or if this is just the opportune moment where this frustration has had blew over the top but when you watch the podcast episode you can hear yachty somewhat try to give bail to mitch multiple times or let him know like man are you really gonna keep saying this are you really gonna keep going in on this and i'll play you guys the clip right now where the exchange i wouldn't say it got heated but this is the section that got everybody looking at yachty like he's crazy so let's go back to 2015 we was at my mama's house right <laughs> i'm in my mama's house now, Mitch is like two or three years older than me, all right? Now, Mitch came to me, and for many years, you didn't just start making beats, by the way. You've been making beats since, who knows how long you've been making beats for, a very long time, all right? And up until, how long have we been doing this? Okay, so up until about maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, you spent a lot of time trying to find your steps. Right. Right, but so that's to sit there and make... That's my point. No, 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 no
Imagine if you didn't have a friend who was already extremely successful to help you get on your feet. A lot of people don't have that. So what I'm saying is, how, what do you say? Because you didn't want to get a job. I never even suggested you get a job because I knew you wouldn't get a job. So what do you say to a who like, hey, I see a with a shiny watch. I got a gun, a dusty gun. It's going to take a shiny watch. You know what I'm saying? What do you tell it? I wouldn't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to encourage it, but you got to think about people got I, families. What I'm tell you is it's shit you can tell it. Bro. What? Like even what? if, even if, but what I'm telling you, think about yourself, but listen, but no. So clearly you guys heard that clip. In this clip, I'm not going to lie. It looks crazy, but we have to contextualize it. I think Yachty's frustration is, man, well, I think Yachty is sympathizing a little bit, or um, I think he's sympathizing a little bit when it comes to criminals. Him saying, nah, do something else is fine. Yachty is being somewhat reasonable and saying, okay, what's the option? And then Mitch is going to be stranded. I think Yachty is saying, you are not the messenger to be delivering this message, Mitch. You are not qualified to be delivering this message. If someone else had got it out the mud and done something let's say on their own, without the help of Yachty or without Yachty completely putting him on, then I think Yachty would have allowed that to continue because you said, okay, you followed the exact blueprint that you're trying to dole out to these other people. However, you, Mitch, did not do that in Yachty's case. Is this a bad thing to do in public? Yes, especially when Yachty gets to talking about like, oh, run that chain. Keep in mind, we also don't know their relationship off camera, but sometimes an off camera relationship when it comes on camera, it may seem a certain way or it may look different. For example, conversations that people have regularly, when they get leaked online, they're like, damn, I can't believe this person's talking like that. But if you were sitting with them and they're letting out, like, if they're just talking like that, you're going to be like, oh, okay. You're, you're not going to freak out and overreact. But the fact that it's put online in front of an audience, the hive mind takes a life of its own. And that's the really interesting thing. You see certain people will get outraged at things online because the hive mind is with them. It's kind of like they've been plugged in, like the Matrix movie when he has to unplug himself getting out of that pod. When people go back online, they plug themselves in. But if the same exact situation, conversation, whatever the case may be happened to them as an individual, they wouldn't react that way. They would just be, oh, okay, whatever, it's just conversation, it's not a big deal. Even if something crazy was said, moving forward from that. I do think this is bad because Yachty should have a sense of what he looks like in front of an audience. But this is the problem. I think Yachty was conducting that podcast the same way he naturally conducts himself and the same way he talks and hangs out with Mitch. And that, therein lies the problem. And why being on a podcast or running a podcast isn't so great because I understand what Yachty says. And keep in mind, Yachty made this Mitch guy. We don't know how much Mitch contributed, which we'll get into in a second, from the accusations of someone else that was involved in Mitch's life. And Mitch was talking about he made beats. I don't really know too many placements that Mitch had. I don't know what beats he contributed to. He could have been doing a lot, but we're going to get into that in a second. So with Yachty, he didn't even hop on a platform that Mitch owned. For example, let's say Mitch was already running a podcast and Yachty's like, damn, you're doing good here. You know, you've, you've built yourself a base. You've been doing this for three to six months on your own. I'm gonna hop on your podcast. And then he hops on and the episode does well. And then maybe he comes every month, every two, three months just to apply, give it a little juice. And Mitch continues on his own. He tries to get guests on his own, etc. That was not the case. Yachty came on there from day one and he's sitting there every single day. It's like, he's not even the coach. It's a tag team at this. It's really not a tag team. Maybe the content is, but the brand, the reason why the people show up to the podcast initially is for Yachty or started off with Yachty. Maybe their first encounter. Perhaps there are some people that are fans of Mitch now. But that's why I say Yachty somewhat made him because that's a completely different scenario from Mitch having been friends with Yachty and doing stuff on his own and then Yachty hopping on and him building up a base that cares about him. So this gets a lot of negative reaction from fans. So we've got just in the YouTube comments of their own audience, Yachty treating Mitch like Joe treated him in 2016. We've got another comment. Yachty's so close-minded for someone who's supposed to be creative. Yachty, you got too squeaky of a voice to be yelling at any grown man about anything. Mitch, let this be the biggest sign for you to start wrapping up that friendship. Yachty might actually hate you. Yachty been trying to little bro Mitch for a while, but it was very evident in this video and it made both me and Keyglock uncomfortable. This is also when the audiences start to read too much into conversation, not into conversations, into a very, very, very small 
interaction between two people on camera. Like these guys have been together for like what, nine, 10 years. If Yachty didn't mess with this guy, he had so many opportunities to drop him. So either Yachty really messed with him, this is a close friend of his, best friend, or this guy's valuable. It's one of those two things, potentially both. Anyway, so this happens. Caribou, I believe she quote tweets herself and decides to inject herself into this. And then she says, I don't say too much because I know stuff going to unfold on its own. And then she quotes it and says, this aged well. I think this is what set Yachty off. So Yachty posts on Twitter saying, okay, I'm about to go on IG Live. I've had enough of this, etc." He posts on his IG story and says, LOL, Caribou, you crazy, dude. He announces the upcoming IG Live and then Yachty hops on an IG Live rant. First, he goes off on Caribou, and we're going to play you guys that clip. I'm so sick and tired of helping people, bro. All I done ever did was help people. From goddamn, this whole care to this Mitch situation online, what y'all talking about some? Uh, Lil Yachty disrespecting his friend. I'm going to start with care, right? All I ever did was help care, nigga, care. If you want to tell this shit, tell the whole story. Go ahead, tell people how you verbally abuse people, all right? Don't get on here and make it seem like kicked you out bullying you bro go ahead and tell people how you talk to people how you tell my security guy oh you home oh you work for me oh uh we are uh we you ain't got no you're poor and uh we above you and how you, you talk to people like they nothing you talk to people like they're like they small like they like they beneath you tell people how you verbally abuse people how you told me you're gonna spit on me when you see me Tell people how you talk to people, bro. How you, how, how you, how you, your brain is clinically imbalanced, bro. How you disrespect people. How you, how you go around treating people in your everyday life. I've been letting you do this whole thing where you act like you like a princess and you sweet and you know, like, oh, you just such a good girl. Bro, stop the front, bro. What you been talking about, bro? You don't even do nothing. It's so crazy to me, bro, because I. I, I, I've given you a career and time to time you just disrespect me. I wrote every verse you've done. You was, you was, you was, you was waiting. What are we talking about? It's your motherfucking life. And you on here lying, talking about some we bully you? What the fuck are we talking about, bro? I wrote that verse when we went on On The Radar. I put you last on purpose so everyone would say, who the fuck is that girl? I the beat down i put 808 specifically on your verse so when it got to your part in the beat drop everyone be like oh the, the girl is the craziest one i wrote that verse the night before we even went to on the radar on my phone wrote, i typed I, I i got the voice i got the fucking reference that's why ain't no music came out since you've been left because you got no music because you can't rap after he gets done going in on Caribou, he goes in on Mitch, announces he's quitting the podcast, etc. Play you guys that clip. I said, ah, you know what? I'm going to give you a platform. I'm going to find someone to sponsor us, and I'm going to give you a platform. We're going to make a podcast, and I'm going to show people how funny you are. I'm going to show people how crazy you are. I'm going to show people like how cool you are, and it's going to give you a platform. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to do no mother podcast. I'm a mother rapper. Got millions of dollars. I don't need to talk to other rappers. I did the podcast for Mitch. Don't put goddamn three, 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 four hundred thousand dollars in Mitch's pocket. And y'all sitting here talking about something. He disrespecting his friend. And I got, I'm, I, I ain't with Mitch, bro. I talk, I, I been asleep all day. I wake up to this crazy. Mitch, how do I say, Mitch, how the you didn't go on the internet and tell these folks that we playing, bro. That tweet got six million views on it. Why the fuck you ain't going there telling folks we playing? Man, it's Twitter, bro. You know how that is, bro. You know how Twitter is, bro. You know how Twitter is, bro. All right, fuck that damn nigga. Fuck the podcast, nigga. Fuck you. Yachty also makes sure everyone knows he never wanted to do a podcast, how much he's down on Caribou, and Caribou being a B-I-T-C-H to everyone, and security guards, etc. There's reasons why Yachty has a legitimate gripe and frustration with this. Number one, being on a podcast, doing an interview as a rapper, doing an IG Live, there's levels to it. I would say IG Live is the lower level where, okay, this is kind of risky, uh, by yourself. Doing 
low risk though. Doing a live with someone else. Let's say you're on someone else's live. Let's say a Kaisa Nat stream, etc. That's a little bit higher level of a risk. And I'll explain what that risk is. Doing an interview let's say with academics, with Charlemagne, with whoever, especially people that are asking legitimate questions and it's not a puff piece. That's, I would say, tier three or the third, the third lowest, whatever you want to call it. That's a little bit higher in terms of risk. And then doing a consistent podcast is the highest level of risk. Every single one of these invites the opportunity for you to be misconstrued, mislabeled, clipped out of context. And once you're clipped out of context, you are subjected to having to address people's misinterpretations and not knowing the context that you originally said something, which is always stressful. Like for example, Big Sean with, oh, this guy's dissing Kendrick Lamar. And then he has to come out and say, no, 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 I'm not dissing Kendrick Lamar. That's just a small example because you can trip up. It's so easy to trip up. And there are people who are looking for, hey, what's a really good clip I can take that will generate the most engagement? The most engagement that's going to be generated is hating on a person. So making them look a certain type of way, that's all there is to it. And to keep in mind, it just takes one. So you could have done 100 podcast episodes and you were great, but this one is enough for people to say, man, this guy's a terrible person. So you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position as as a rapper or someone who needs to rely on their image to make money doing a podcast. So Yachty is doing this guy a huge favor. And he even said he only did it because of Mitch. And I believe that. I don't think any rapper or most rappers want to that are active, successful, want to s continuously sit down and do a podcast every week. I don't think they want to do that. And there's a reason why most aren't doing that. So he does that for this friend. Caribou, her treating all of these people poorly reflects on Yachty. So Yachty is introducing this person who he said wasn't anything. He said she was washing dishes, which I believe. And he's introducing her to these people. And now she's giving people that Yachty has a cordial relationship with an ego and disrespecting them. And they're looking at it like, damn, Yachty, we're treating this girl a certain type of way because of our relationship with you because we like you, we respect you, and we've had good dealings in the past. It could be business or it could be just personal relationships. And this is like who you're having us deal with. Do you know what she's doing? Do you know how she talks to us? So Yachty probably has to hear about this. And it might be a surprise to him because I don't think he would have put her on if she was acting that way with him from the beginning. So now he's like, damn, now my relationships with these people or I, I look a certain type of way with these people that I'm very cool with and we've had relationships spanning years and I'm trying to put this girl on and she's treating them this way. What the hell? So this hurts Yachty behind the scenes. So these are other things that are probably frustrating him. And I completely understand where he's coming from. Now, after this, Mitch's ex-girlfriend slash cousin decides to come in to the mix and she does this seven or eight minute Twitter space, which, oh boy. I'll just try to put out, there's a recurring joke, apparently, that I just figured out that Mitch was dating some girl, smashing some girl, and then he finds out that she's his cousin later on. I don't know if it's a second cousin, third cousin, whatever. And then they keep seeing each other afterwards, and then I think he gets out of it. Regardless, Yachty exposed this on one of the podcasts. I don't think Yachty was trying to do it intentionally, but that's another clip that people resurfaced and looked at it through a different lens now after seeing this new clip of Yachty. And that's the problem. People can go back in content and things that they thought were funny and innocent back then, they can say, oh, nah, see, he's been trying to take down Mitch since the beginning and make him look bad. So she goes on live. I'll play you guys the short excerpt of what she said. Yo, I'm sorry. This shit got me mad as fuck. Like, I'm so, like, and Mitch, I know you're finna be mad as hell. I know you're finna be mad as hell because you hate when I come to the internet, but I, I can't. Like, this took it to the internet. This the boat took it to the internet. So let's take it to the fucking internet because I'm somebody that's been there since 20 the fuck 19. When you put your fucking career to the fucking side to be this is everything, manager, role manager, creative director, all that shit, who was fucking sending them meetings? Every time I fucking called my ex-boyfriend, he was in a fucking meeting for your stupid and you gonna sit up here and say, oh, like, all I ever did was help you, nigga. You hired the nigga, fuck you mean? That's his job. The fuck is you talking about? Like, you really have some fucking nerve. And and I, bro, I've stayed quiet for fucking years. I, I ain't never, I ain't never said shit to this nigga. But high and by when I came over. And I let a lot of shit, like, I've been telling Mitch you was a bogus ass nigga. I've been saying that shit. Cause you are, you're a bogus ass nigga. And now it's finally getting fucking exposed, you bitch ass nigga. And I dare you. I fucking dare a motherfucker say I'm fucking lying. I want somebody to say I'm fucking lying. I want, I want one, I want one of y'all concrete to say I'm fucking 
lying. Because I will really get into y'all real tea. Because you know what? I've been around for years. And I've been quiet. And I've just been observing. And I've just been collecting on y'all niggas. Don't fucking make me. You don't know what the fuck I know. Don't, don't fucking make me really do it to y'all. This girl, I don't necessarily think she wants clout. I think she wanted to be seen and heard for this specific moment. And you guys don't even want to hear what she said after. She was talking about, oh, that podcast is successful because of Mitch. And if we're being real, that podcast is successful because of me. Uh, because my recurring joke that you guys talk about his cousin, ex-girlfriend, just loony, loony bin. They got to pick her up, send her to, what's that island? Whatever island they keep the, they have that mental hospital in somewhere in America. I think it's in New York. Some people probably know what I'm talking about, but yeah, they need to have her somewhere else. So Yachty replies to her very aggressively in this clip. You dumb this nigga is telling you lies just to get away from you. What is you talking about? Talking about all the times you called him, he was in meetings. Mitch ain't never did no damn meetings for me. What is you talk about? You with me, me, bro, me, bro. Stop, stop playing with me. You wasn't, you're not even a factor in this, bro. You was really a that he just used to use to sleep at your motherfucking house. I ain't never stole a dollar from Mitch. Mitch been living with me since the mother. Ten years ago, nigga, when I ain't even have a, a cent. When I lived in my mama's house, he lived with me, nigga. How did you talk about? You, you really starting some shit you don't know what you talking about. You not even a, you don't know nothing you talking about. What is you, what are you saying, bro? I ain't never stole a dollar from that nigga. If anything, I helped him nigga out. I, da I dare you. Miss, you better get this, bro. You better hit, get, you better get, bro, if I really, like, really tell it how it is, bro. Nigga ain't never did nothing for me. What you talking about? Put this shit to the side for me. What you talking about? You got some dirt on me, nigga. Put it on the motherfucking light. If you got some dirt, bring it to the motherfucking light, huh? so we can really tell everything how it is. Stop playing with me, bro. You was nothing in this shit, bro. You, 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 you. By the way, y'all, this the cousin we be talking about. This the cousin. Like, the, from, the, from the podcast, talking about the cousin, like, the, like the cousins, like, like, uh, you dumb, you weird, weird ass bitch. Stop playing with me. And then Mitch realizes, okay, I've got to fix this situation because she is tripping. So Mitch hops on and says the following. All right, let's clear some things up. Please don't let that clip misguide you. It doesn't represent me and Yachty's friendship at all. We joke around pretty harsh sometimes. Too much for real sometimes. But IRL, it's nothing but respect and love. I can't even get on here and act like it's not. This guy's saving his job. Of course, he should. I also think this is genuinely how he feels. I ain't nobody little bro. Never been. Check my history. I had stats before I met bro. What stats? And got even more now. What stats without Yachty? Now. All I ever wanted to do was just focus on the music and being involved in the culture in a positive way. I hope none of this hinders that. The problem with this too is I think Yachty wanted this explanation and tweets days before this happened. I think Yachty wanted this when the podcast dropped and he was getting this hate. And that's why Yachty said, yo, I was telling Mitch, yo, what, why are people tripping out about this? He said, man, you know, it's Twitter, bro. That's just how they get down, which... I kind of get where Mitch is coming from, but he potentially isn't completely understanding how Yachty feels with multiple other things going on in his life. And then he continues on saying, if you don't hear it from me, it's not true. Bro never stole from me and we don't have no shady history or anything along that nature. So that's cap. Everybody that know me know I put in work. Nobody can take that from me. And he wasn't trying to take that from me. We just debating on camera. It got taken out of context. I'm dead. The next podcast will be epic. I don't even think we need a guest this time. LOL. See you around. Insert think piece below. We have not seen that next episode yet. Yachty continues that night and leaks Caribou's On the Radar Freestyle. I'm not going to play it here. It's copyright. But he says, yeah, I, I wrote for you. I dressed you. He drops that bar for bar, word for word, flow for flow, beat, everything. I think that's one of the craziest things I had ever witnessed. Having your On the Radar Freestyle completely reference tracked. That's insane. And then having the nerve to talk back to this individual that blessed you like that. Good, good golly gee. So Caribou replies, cocky, of course, the next day, saying, put it on your kid, I ain't write these songs, Miles. Did y'all know Yachty had a kid? I didn't know that. Stop the cap and leave me out your internet shenanigans. And she circles two, long, two songs, Running Late and Where Yo Daddy. Stop bullying me, big dog. I never said nothing. You letting random fans get in your head? Man up. Okay. Funny enough, academics says he got information from an inside source that one or both of these songs, while they weren't written by Yachty, they were written by none other than, drumroll, Mitch. So at least now we know Mitch is potentially writing or 
has written for Caribou, who knows who else he's writing for. And if he's doing that, then I have a lot of respect for Mitch because he could have thrown that out in the conversation with Yachty, but those opportunities probably wouldn't have come up without Yachty. There's an angle there. Regardless, that doesn't look too hot for Caribou. Again, then Caribou does a live show where only the employees of the event were there. Can't really play too much of the song. But yeah, you can see that barely anybody was there. She's you know, who don't write, who don't write, taking some shots at Yachty there. But I think this is unfair with how people are replying to it. Dude, Caribou is a no-name artist. She's kind of lit. They're probably having, this is a festival or so, some sort of festival. They're probably having her perform at 1130 a.m. while people are still coming in through the line. It's ridiculous to even try to say that she should have this packed out. She's one of the early performers. She's not a poppin' artist. She's new. She's on the come up. But she's kind of hated at this point in time. So people decided to come at her like this. I just don't think that's fair. While I do think Caribou's demonstrated a lot of entitlement and being ungrateful, I'm not just going to come out and lie and say, damn, nobody's out there. And she's still trying to do her thing, in this video at least. Then, Yachty puts out, I don't know which came first, but Yachty puts out this IG story saying, don't throw rocks and hide your hand. I'm guessing this was in reference to the, like, who don't write when she was on stage. And then she goes on this tirade. I'll never forget this feeling, this chapter of my life, I'll never be the same. I'll never forget who wasn't there for me. I done chomp people out, spent my last slap folks for people. I ride every time naturally. What is she talking about? But that's just how I am. Nobody owe me anything to BH. I'm just taking a mental note. I can't even look at most people the same way. To know the truth and watch a grown man with 12 million followers overly lie on my name and publicly bully me for literally no reason at all while I silently been conquering all the stuff y'all been throwing at me this whole time behind closed doors. I'll never ignore the signs again and I'll never stop no matter how much they hate me. I never threw rocks and you have my number, you big grown itch. Leave me alone literally at Lil Yachty. I never said nothing about stuff, and I still ain't said nothing about what's really going on. I don't want no beef with you industry people. Just move on with your life. Stop trying to bring me down when I stay out the way. I'm done talking. You got it. Your character going to speak for itself. This is just a bunch of yap. Just a straight yap session right there from Caribou in text form. Since then, we haven't really seen much from Yachty. We haven't really seen much from Caribou. We have not seen any label pick her up yet. She seems to be doing her own thing. I'm almost certain she's still signed to Concrete, so Yachty's going to eat off her regardless. Besides, so much money has been dumped into this girl. Of course, she's not... Gen Keep in mind, she she doesn't even have... Does she even... No, she doesn't have a million monthly listeners. Let's see if it's gone up since this whole incident. 647,000 monthly listeners. This is the crazy thing about this. I don't think her monthly listeners have gone up much. If Let's just look at my old video, which was a couple of weeks before this happened. This has had a near zero effect positive net positive on her music yet she's a lot more famous than she was do you see the difference be between what being relevant means and what having people listen to your music means those two do not go hand in hand i think this is just a beautiful learning lesson for us when it comes to that as you would think or her monthly listeners would have gone crazy but they did not unfortunately for her this is definitely not the end of this i'm really the only criticism that I can genuinely give Yachty in this situation, because I empathize, I, I get his frustration, is the way he put, is his misjudgment in a split second of realizing how catastrophic people would react to him in that Mitch clip. That is the only thing. Other than that, man, I think Yachty was right for every other single thing he said. Oh, well, everything he said was facts. It's just how it was received. The caribou thing, man, I get it. And why would he keep sticking with this chick that's just causing him problems? And I genuinely believe that Yachty just tries to help people. Because we can't say Yachty tries to put stuff in people's face. Because we found out about him writing Act Up from somebody else. Yachty never told us that. And he kept his mouth shut for a very, very long time about that. It wasn't until people kept asking him, yo, you wrote Act Up, you wrote Act Up. So it was eventually like, yeah, yeah. He's also written for other people. Like, for example, the Jumbotron Poppin' song. He was getting a bunch of hate when people were saying that Yachty was ruining Drake. Well, because, oh, Drake's got his nails painted like Yachty. He's kind of dressing like Yachty now. What's going on? Meanwhile, Yachty sees Jumbotron popping his own song at the top of the Billboard charts, like at least top 40, one of people's favorite songs, them jamming it, and he shuts up. He doesn't say, man, y'all saying I'm ruining Drake? Well, this is my song. Oh, I gave Drake this song. Or, man, y'all don't even know what I'm working on. 
even I think even academics said he was in disbelief. And that's one of Drake's biggest, 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 biggest fans. He said he would be in disbelief if Yachty had actually written or done something on that song. And that's just one of the many things that Yachty has worked on. Yachty didn't let everyone know he was writing for this chick. Who else has he written for? There are a bunch of other people that we don't even know that Yachty has written for, and we've gotten clues just from academics who I believe his sources. He's never come out and pretty much put out fake information. So he's saying that Yachty's writing for a lot of relevant artists. So if he cared that much about people knowing and giving him credit, he would he would put it out there more. And he doesn't. So I genuinely think he's trying to help people. He's such a successful writer. His last album performed very well. So people are enjoying his music right now. Why the hell would he need to add a whole new crew of people that he's trying to put on? He doesn't. So I genuinely think he sees people and wants to put them in a position. Yo, what other rapper do you know that's going to sit with their closest friend on a podcast week by week and get them a full on deal just for them? He's not even putting him in a position and leaving him. He's sitting there with them every single week. We don't know anybody else that's doing stuff like that. Like the whole sailing team thing. That, I wouldn't say it failed because of Yachty, but Yachty got on. He tried to do the Chief Keef thing. A bunch of these people were lazy or they just couldn't hack it. He dumped a ton of his own money in, lost all of that money. He's not going to get that money back. And then he decides to do it again later on in his career. It's the guy's pretty selfless from what we've seen. And that's just what we've seen in public of him helping people. We don't know what he's doing behind the scenes. And we've also... When he was talking about Caribou, he said he never treats people poorly. That made me think I have never seen or heard of a story of someone saying they had a negative interaction with Yachty in person. And we hear this all the time. Like, yo, this guy was terrible. This guy was mean, etc. We've never heard a story about that regarding Yachty. And Yachty is an easy person to hate. So if there was a story like that, it would have been dropped. But that's pretty much what I've got to say about the situation. I genuinely feel bad for Yachty in this like whole heat of... He just gets the the whack end of the stick a lot of the time and I hope some of the other draft not no I was gonna say some of the other draft day artists because that reminded me draft day one of the artists on concrete dropped a song in the midst of this which is great like like, let's go this guy's getting something done hopefully one of the other concrete members takes off and Yachty can feel good about that but let me know what you guys think in the comments like subscribe and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed follow me on twitter and instagram thank you for watching peace